Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring, and in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you in great detail about module one. How can you make sure that you get from module one to the harder module two? I talked about why this is important in another video that covered the overview of the entire digital SAT format. I recommend that you start with that. It's This is gonna get more detailed. This is not something that everyone needs to understand or be interested in, but this is a video I made after some lengthy experimentation. So I hope that if you are really shooting for those top scores and are very curious about how this test works, this is a very helpful in for piece of information for you. But for most people, don't worry. If this gets confusing, you can turn it off, just go to my channel for the much more important strategies and ideas that you're gonna need for the test. This is just for people who really like inside baseball. So let's just review what we're even talking about here. Remember that the digital SAT is adaptive, meaning how well you do in module one for each subject is gonna impact what your module two looks like for that subject. So if you do well enough, you will be placed into a harder second module that will have harder questions. If you don't do well enough in module one, you will get placed in an easier module that will hurt your score. You will be capped at about a 600. So for some people that doesn't matter, but if you're trying for a higher score, basically higher than a 1200, you need to make sure that in both subjects you are placed in the harder module. And my quick version of the strategy from my other separate video was that you need to get at most five wrong in that first module to be guaranteed entry into the harder second module. So where did I come up with that number? I did some experimenting. Let's take a look. Basically, in the Blue Book app, you can take practice tests. And so if you take a practice test, you will start off in the same module one that everyone else taking that practice test would, would get. So you would get, let's say, reading module one. And what I did is I made sure that I got the first eight questions wrong in that reading module. Okay, so everything else was correct in the first module, except those first eight questions were wrong. And what that happened, what happens next is that it puts us in the easy second module, okay? Now in that second module, if you get every single question right, you can get a 590, right? So that kind of matches with what I said before, that you're kind of capped at a 600. Even if you get everything right in the easy module, you, your score is gonna be limited. Now if we do the exact same experiment in the math section, getting the first eight questions wrong in that first module, that actually puts us into the hard module. And then again, getting everything right, that would put us at a 710, okay? So just to be clear, this is for SAT number one, the first practice test in the Blue Book app as of a fall of 2023, okay? My, things might change, who knows? But I think the overall pattern is gonna be the same. So that's already a big difference. We have the easy module, eight questions wrong, getting us a 590 in the hard module in math. I know it's a different subject, but 710, right? So think about that. In math, eight questions wrong was worth 90 points, right? Because the maximum score is an 800. But eight questions wrong in reading was worth 210 points. The same number of questions wrong, which is even crazier because the math has fewer overall questions. So you'd think eight questions would be worth more in math because there's just fewer questions. But it just goes to show the power of the module, all right? The adaptive testing is gonna affect the score. Now, if we run the exact same experiment again, but this time, instead of getting eight wrong at the beginning of the section, we make sure we get those eight wrong in the middle of each section, the scores change slightly, okay? So in the reading, we go from a 590 to a 580. In the math, we go from a 710 to a 680. P pretty much the same, so a little variation. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the questions are not worth the same. It's possible that somewhere in here we hit those questions that don't actually count. Remember, in each module, there are gonna be two questions that do not count for your score. They are basically there to test out questions on you, so uh, they won't count. You won't know that they're just guinea pig questions, but that's what they are doing there. So that's possible that that's manipulating things a little bit, but I think what's actually happening here is that the questions are not worth the same amount. So depending on which ones you get wrong, you might adjust your score slightly. But you know what, that's not a big deal, right? 710, 680, it's not that much of a difference. Certainly 590 and 580, not so bad. But let's run the experiment one more time. Take SAT practice test number one, get the last eight questions wrong in each section. And look at how much it changes things now, right? In the reading, if we get the last eight questions wrong, that 
somehow qualifies us for the hard module, even though before it put us in the easy module, right? Same number of questions wrong. And now completely different result because when we get put in that hard module and get everything right, now we have a 690, a much, much higher score than getting everything right in those easy modules. Same thing in math, it's actually the reverse. Now the eight questions at the end of the math section, well, those somehow I guess are worth more and they put us in the easy second module and now the score gets limited to a 550. Now in reading, the, the difficulty level of the questions is kind of all over the place, but in math, we know that the easy questions are at the beginning and that the hard questions are at the end. So maybe that makes sense. The hard questions are worth more, so that's gonna hurt you. But uh, not so fast. We're gonna see later on that that might not be true. For now, I just want you to take away, look at the difference here. The easy module has this common feature of, like I said, kind of limiting our score to about a 600. In this case, no one even got there, but it, it's still, these students here were, even though they did really well in the easy module, getting every single question right, they were still heavily penalized for not getting into the hard module in the first place. If you get into the hard module, notice those scores, 690, 680, 710, much higher. So Let's take a look at another experiment that I can, we can run on this SAT practice test number one. Let's focus specifically on the version where we had eight questions wrong in the middle. And remember that put us in the easy module, and even if we got everything right, we were limited to a 580. Let's take another test. This time, instead of getting uh, eight questions wrong, let's just get a little bit better. Let's just get one fewer question wrong, so seven to total wrong in the first module. Right, what does that do? Well, this time, seven wrong was enough to put us into the hard module. And again, getting everything right, that gets us a 690. So think about that, this is crazy, okay? <laughs> we got one more question right. And that question, technically, was worth 110 points. It shifted the score by 110, okay? That shows again the power of the second module. If you get placed in that hard module, you have a lot higher of a score that you can potentially reach. Now I will admit, these are the extremes, right? Is it going to be the case that you get every single question wrong in the second, or sorry, every single question right in the second module? Probably not, right? Especially if it's the hard one. So the reality is probably somewhere in the middle, that you would take a test, you might get seven wrong in that first module, you would get placed in the hard module, but you wouldn't get everything right. You get a few wrong in there, and so your score might be somewhere in the middle, like a 610. And so if that's the case for most people, then it looks like it really doesn't actually matter which module you're in, because harder questions means you're probably gonna get more wrong, so your score isn't actually gonna reach this 690 kind of limit. It'll just be more like you know a 610, and so it won't be that different. But the big question on my mind is maybe is it really that rare for this situation to happen where someone does get a few questions wrong in the first module and then in the easy modules gets every single thing right? Well, so far, again, in fall of 2023, I have seen a bunch of people take these practice tests and that exact thing has happened multiple times to multiple students where through careless mistakes or misreading a question or just not knowing how to solve a few, they got just enough wrong in that first module that they got put into the easy one. But they're smart enough that they were able to get every single question right in the easy module. In fact, in my mind, they should have qualified for the hard module, but because they didn't, their score got limited. So I think this is a real problem that you're gonna need to deal with if you are looking for top scores. You have to be really good about that first module because it can dramatically shift what happens. It's not impossible that that exact situation can happen where you get a few wrong, but then get everything right in the second module, but because it was easy, it doesn't really help you that much. Let's do one more experiment here. As I said, these were all at SAT number one, and you can see there is some variation, things that are, that are gonna happen, but if we do the exact same set of tests for SAT number two in the Blue Book app, then the scores do change, in some cases, significantly. You can see that a few of them are kind of the same, right? So eight wrong at the beginning of the reading section was a 590 in SAT number one and a 580 in SAT number two. And that's pretty typical of SATs. There's always kind of a little variation from one test to another where the same number wrong will have a slightly different score on a different test. So that all has to do with the bell curve and equating and, and trust the math there, that it, it makes sense. 
But then we also see a few that are very different. So looking at the, the middle there on the left, the reading getting uh, the middle uh, few wrong, notice that that shifted a bunch of points. Well, why do you think that happened? Probably because the person got into the hard module. So on SAT number one, eight wrong in the middle was not good enough. And it put you in the easy module and limited your score to a 580. But in SAT number two, eight wrong is okay. And you get put in the hard module and now you have the potential to get a 670. So it's a dramatic swing and it's not consistent from test to test. In the math part, look, everything changed, right? We have a hard module now at the bottom where, the, the, where I thought before that maybe the hard questions were worth more. Uh, maybe not, because in this case, the hard questions, even getting eight of them wrong, still was enough to get you into the hard module and keep your score pretty high. Whereas now, the easy questions at the beginning, you getting those wrong counted more against you, and so now that person was put into the easy module, and again, their score was limited. So I don't know what to make of this. The, what is the conclusion when there's this much change in variability, not only from test to test, but within one test, depending on which questions you miss? The, the best conclusion I came up with is what I've already said. The eight wrong, lots of things can happen. And looking at different tests, seven wrong, six wrong, there's still enough variability that I don't know. You're, you're taking a gamble. So the safe bet is that at most, you really want to get five wrong in that first module to pretty much guarantee that you're gonna be put in the harder module. Of course, I could still be wrong. There are tests that I'm never gonna see because they will never be practice tests. They will just be given to real people and maybe that scaling is diff different. So I don't know for sure, but I think based on my experimentation, this is a pretty safe bet. Maximum of five wrong. And one way we're gonna deal with this is I will make another video to go into more detail how we can keep track of those five and, and really strategize in that first module to make sure we have the best odds of getting into the second. I call this the five finger formula. And like I said, I, I, you've already taken up enough, I have already taken up enough of your time. We'll save that for a separate video because uh, most people are gonna be turned off by this math and they still need to know that formula. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you have access to that video, all of my strategy videos, uh, everything that you need for this digital SAT. You can find it on my YouTube channel. You can find it on my website. So make sure that you please subscribe. It also helps me out. And believe me, it took a while to do those experiments. So I'd appreciate uh, the follow as a little bit of a thank you. Um, thank you so much, though, for watching. And remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. Settle for more.